Hey Internet, this is Jacob Clifford and welcome to Econ Movies. Now today we're going to talk about the economics in the movie Limitless. The main character is Eddie Mora and he's a down and out writer living in New York City and he's on the brink of homelessness. You see that guy? That was me not so long ago. But it all changes when he randomly meets up with Vernon who gives him a new experimental drug. What's in it? You know how they say that we can only access 20% of our brain? Well, what this does, it lets you access all of it. Eddie takes the drug and experiences a surge of brain power. And just like that, he's more intelligent, organized, and motivated. I was blind, but now I see. I learned to play the piano in three days. Math became useful. Even half listening to any language, I became fluent. Economists actually have a word for this. It's called human capital. It's the knowledge skills and talents that individuals have that make them more productive and it's the reason why we spend trillions of dollars on education and schools. And it explains why you watch my videos. You're here to learn economics which will make you smarter and better and hopefully more productive which is your human capital. Anyways, let's go back to Eddie Mora. Tablet a day and what I could do with my day was limitless. The next morning, I sent a little probe down into my brain no surge of brilliance came up to greet me. In short, I was back. Eddie's rise and fall, his boom and bust, is an allegory for the economy. And that's no coincidence. The screenplay for this movie was adapted from a novel written in 2001. And what was happening in that year? Well, it was the end of the dot-com boom. By 1997, the internet had become a thing and investors realized that e-commerce, or the idea of buying and selling online, was going to be big. So thousands of web-based companies sprang up with one goal, to get big fast, to gain name recognition and investors. The tech industry boomed as speculators threw in money and the stock market soared, life was good, and the future was bright. I finally had my shock. Wall Street would provide my nest egg. Suddenly. History suggests that a meteoric rise usually leads to a meteoric fall. And by the year 2000, people realized that the dot com boom was actually a bubble. Companies were overvalued because speculators had ignored traditional measurements like price earning ratios. In fact, many of these dot com companies never even earned a profit. And in the end, thousands of tech companies went out of business, and the NASDAQ stock market index fell over 75%. Now you would think that people would learn from the past, but like a mind-altering drug, the desire to get rich quick clouds their memory and judgment. In fact, it was only a few years after the dot-com bubble that the US saw another bubble, except this time it was in housing. I so say you want some more? Yes, definitely. What would you do? All right. The combination of low interest rates, speculative buyers, and shady lenders drove up housing prices 50 to 100% in just a few years. And in many cases, buyers were purchasing houses they couldn't even afford. They took out huge loans and figured that the value of their home would just be going up over time so they could just sell their house later on and make a huge profit. And that fueled the bubble even further and people were paying outrageous prices for houses. What's the asking price? 8.5. I'll take it. But again, as it always does, the market crashed. Home prices nosedived and homeowners owed more to the bank than they paid for the actual house. So many people foreclosed and that lowered prices even further. It's important to keep in mind that we're not talking about economic theory here. These events devastated real people. Now, I took it too. But when he told me about this amazing new drug, I was like, down the hatch, and it was, it was amazing. And then I got, I got scared. Why? Why? Because I'm not stupid. Nobody can operate at that level of mental activity and not crash. In the movie, there's a seemingly insignificant scene where Eddie's talking to a group of people at a bar, and it's part of a montage showing his newfound intelligence and charisma. But actually pay attention to what he's saying. Sure, you get a short-term spike, but wouldn't that rapid expansion devalue just not completely in two years? No, because there are safeguards. Against aggressive overexpansion? Well, there aren't, because there are no safeguards in human nature. And we're wired to overreach. He specifically warns against aggressive overexpansion and says that we're wired to overreach. And the irony, of course, 
is that he doesn't follow his own advice. The whole rest of the movie is about him overreaching. He's just not satisfied with being a millionaire. He just wants more and more. And it's that type of thinking that leads to irrational exuberance and economic bubbles. <laughs> what? The real takeaway here is not about economic theory or historic bubbles. It's about you and the decisions that you're going to make. I mean, right now in 2017, there's two potential bubbles, one in the stock market and one in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Now, with numbers like these, you've got to admit there's got to be some aggressive overexpansion or some irrational exuberance. But how can you tell the difference? How do you know if something's a great opportunity or just a bubble? Well, here's the rule. If you buy something solely because you're hoping that someone else will pay you a whole lot more money for it in the near future, then watch out. You're creating the bubble. And although that frenzy and excitement might feel like it's gonna last forever, economics and history tell us that it's not limitless. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you think we have a bubble in the stock market or maybe even in Bitcoin. And please like, share, subscribe, and check out my other econ videos. I do more econ movies. Check those out. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.